What's up, everyone? Thank you for checking out this episode of Raised a Geek. This week, we rewind the clock a little bit and go back and watch the original two Fantastic Four movies. Why? We don't know, but we're going to talk about it here, so let's get into it. I'm Chris, and as always, I'm here with my buddy Don. How we doing, man? Chris, what is up today, my friend? Everything is good on this holiday weekend, Labor Day. Yep. Happy Labor Day to those out there who labor. Um, this is your day. Get the day off. Damn the man. Save the empire. Um, <laughs> and it is the last Sunday before football. Ooh, yes. And we're going to have 18 consecutive weeks plus playoffs and Super Bowl. Going to be uh, busy on the weekends as it tends to happen for us. Yep. yep. I'm excited. Getting in those fantasy football drafts and mm-hmm. all that stuff. I become better a or worse. I become a degenerate gambler for the next uh, few months. Eh, not degenerate, <laughs> just like a <laughs> responsible you know, gambler, casual responsible gambler. But it makes it makes watching the sports more fun. Same way as like fantasy does, because then you start paying attention to every other game beside your team yeah. when you're gambling too. Like put a couple dollars on this guy to do this, makes it just more interesting. Then you get your iPad set up and your TV and your phone and. Like you're gonna have multiple screens this year with the NFL Sunday ticket, so yeah, it's gonna be uh, it should be cool. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm excited to be able to watch all the Bears games. Mm-hmm. Check them all out. Watch being that. A, What's being, up? A, being a fan of a team when you don't live in that town is like traditionally something hard. Now they've made it easier to kind of do that. Uh, Getting there. And it's about time with the way technology is now. You should be able to watch you know, the team you want to watch and not just be like, I got to sit and watch Dallas Cowboys games and you don't want to do that. No offense to the Cowboys fans listening. We love your team's cool and everything, but that's all Chris could watch for a while. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much Houston Texans games you can watch Uh (laughs) before you want to freak out and explode. But holiday weekend, you you're extended yours past Tuesday. You're going to get some Mm. your gaming on. Yeah, maybe a little bit, a little bit. Uh, catch up on some stuff. I, I have some shows I need to watch too, but yeah, games and shows and <sighs> just get some sleep, you know. I do, uh, I do. That's, that's I what do. these uh, that's what these holidays are for. Yeah, that extra make up a day. So yeah, I'm mm-hmm. excited to have tomorrow to do something, man. Uh, yeah, but I started this weekend, this holiday weekend, watching Fantastic Four movies. Yeah, we uh. We decided to do this. It's a little thing we're gonna kind of call "Raised a Geek Rewind." Watch some older films, you know, superhero stuff or similar things we talk about, but just like older movies, maybe we've seen or maybe some we haven't seen. But maybe it's just been a while. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start with this. We've done this kind of thing before, like Blade. We watched and Ninja um, Turtles, Ninja Turtles, and a few other things. We just never decided to brand them as a uh, subtopic. So now we're going to start doing that. So um, first official rewind, Raised Geek recording. And we decided on Fantastic Four because, I don't know, it's been a while since I've seen it. And, of course, there's been chatter about Fantastic Four and because the MCU hasn't done them yet. And it seems like they've been talking about it for years. I don't know, when was it when Kevin Feige like started talking about them at one of the uh san diego comic cons it feels like three or four years ago when they came out with the logo and it became part of the schedule and they were like it's just a tentative release still no casting still no uh release date still no really word about it but it's up there it's some it's gonna happen sometime right um maybe (laughs) maybe i don't know they just they just uh, took got rid of the uh daredevil and yeah what was it agatha and daredevil or daredevil and echo Daredevil, Agatha, Ironheart. Maybe. Like all of them just like completely lost their release date and you have no idea when we're going to get Daredevil. Oh, well, didn't we kind of know this was coming with the writer's strike? Um, the writer's strike and the reception of the last few Marvel projects. Yes, they're definitely shuffling some stuff. But that was part of the other reason why we figured, hey, let's watch some older shit because we're not going to have any newer stuff. It looks like for a little bit mm-hmm. as everything's getting pushed. So it might be till next year before we got some new stuff to talk about. So let's uh, do that. The other thing was that uh, 
my gym was playing the first Fantastic Four movie while I was on the treadmill. So I watched the last 15 minutes and the first 15 minutes kind of wanted to watch the rest of it. <laughs> Became an easy thing to do. Um, but as we talk about this Raise the Geek Rewind, if there's anything that you want to uh, hear us talk about or think we should watch, uh, definitely shoot us over an email at raisegeek at gmail.com or hit us up on any of our social uh, media platforms at Raised a Geek. Subscribe to YouTube, rate us on Spotify. We are everywhere. We're always looking for reviews and we're always looking for those follows so you won't miss a thing. But like I said, we mostly just want to be able to have a conversation with you. So definitely hit us up on those things. So Don, let's talk about some fantastic four. We're going all the way back to 2005, which doesn't seem that long ago until you really think about it. Mm -hmm. Like 2005, that's not too bad. No, it's 2023. This movie's almost 20 years old. Yeah, I guess it is almost 20 years old. 18 years of uh, yeah. of, of that. And and to to kind of put this in as we're talking about, like I said, superhero movies, you kind of are thinking about like, okay, well, you know, we get superhero movies like every other week now. But like 2000 was when we got the first X-Men movie. So that was only five years mm -hmm. before this movie. And the only superhero movies for Marvel that released in 2005 was Elektra and Fantastic Four. That you're saying that was the year 2005. Those are the only two. Those are the only two. Electra, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Electra and Fantastic Four were the only movies released this year for Marvel. Um, like I said, Spider Man came out in 2002, so we're right there at this cusp of this beginning era of comic book movies. Over on the uh, DC side, we did get Constantine, which is a completely different kind of movie and batman begins did come out in 2005 so that that's a that's a pretty good one yeah i was actually sitting here thinking before we started recording this is like this was like the in the era of non mcu marvel yeah. obviously because we all know that iron man started that in whatever year that came out 2008 right so, so we're still a couple way a couple years away from the so mcu yeah. Everything that was like pre MCU, sometimes in your head, or is this just me? Do you like make that its own universe? Like, do you imagine like they never talked about it, but like in this Fantastic Four movie, was Tobey Maguire Spider Man somewhere doing something, or like were the X Men chilling off in some kind of corner and they thought maybe that that was going on, but they never like mentioned each other? I that would make it cool if they if they really did that. I don't think they. I mean, obviously they didn't. Otherwise, they would have tried to maybe intertwine the movies, like have Wolverine pop up in in Fantastic Four or whatever. But no, they, yeah, they seemed like they kept them separate. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to wonder if they ever did like a wink think about and a nudge, that. right? Like we're this is a Marvel movie, and we're all using the same New York. Why wouldn't Spider Man, Tobey Maguire be somewhere in this Fantastic Four mm -hmm. movie? Daredevil came out in 2023. That's 20th Century Fox, and that's mm -hmm. same city. Right. Or 2003, right? 2003 is when Daredevil came out, Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Right. Like so I said, ben, we got Electra. So... Do you ever watch Electra? 20... I don't think so. I know I've <laughs> seen it, but... Yeah, I think I passed on that one. Didn't they uh... say Jennifer Garner is going to be at Electra in Deadpool? Yeah, supposedly she if that was confirmed her that movie's gonna i don't know what that movie's gonna be another multiverse thing who knows we're all yeah. multiverse fatigue but it is deadpool so it's kind of its own thing we'll see how that goes but uh yeah i don't know just something i was trying to remember if we ever thought about but pre-mcu marvel is kind of its own thing it definitely is its own it's definitely its own thing and i kind of miss it a little bit sometimes man i just want these movies just to be a movie and not all connected all everything. connected and like so much connective tissue between each one that mm -hmm. sometimes it always feels like especially once they started messing with these shows it kind of muckied the waters a little bit yeah yeah so the, the, the fox marvel days was weird not weird but just like they felt different they felt like fox yeah i kind of. and like even I know exactly what you mean. It just felt like a Fox mm -hmm. movie. Like X-Men, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, they all just felt different than what Marvel movies feel like now. And yes. like even 
we'll get into it and everything but like even watching this movie just like sometimes the music they would play in the background just sounded like home alone like orchestras like do 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 just like <laughs> it sounds just like a silly romp with kevin McAllister. It's like this is a superhero movie it just feels different than modern day superhero films and i don't know if that's good or bad it just it definitely has its own feeling and it's hard to describe yeah well i i back at this period of time too is where they were still like trying to make these movies feel like a comic book Mm -hmm. to where the way that they shot the cinematography the just the overall feeling for it was like hey these characters are going to look different you know they're not gonna look like real world so let's not make this world super Mm -hmm. like lifelike it wasn't until nolan came in with batman and for better or worse changed everything and made everyone because i did go which wasn't part of our assignment but i did go and watch the 2015 fantastic four and watching them try to make it dark and like more grounded i'm just like what is this movie but Mm -hmm. that's not what we're here to talk about i hope not because i've never seen it (laughs) and i never will and i know i've told you i've now watched that movie twice no idea how it ends I get distracted in the last like 15 minutes and I don't, I've never seen the end. So anyway, fantastic four, but yes, Uh it's definitely a Kevin McAllister joint here. Uh, just (laughs) like I'm waiting for someone to slip on matchbox cars and micro machines. Uh Yeah. That kind of hijinks mixed with the coming out of the nineties extremism with, you know, Chris Evans jumping out of a helicopter, snowboarding to some 41, I was going to bring that up. That was hilarious. <laughs> but sometimes the soundtrack, especially in that first one, I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is definitely early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeez. That, that, was, that was fun. <laughs> and like Maria Menounos was like his date. She's oh totally God. 90s. What? It was Maria Menounos, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Or that was his girl for, or girl he was skiing with. And then in yeah. like the second one, it was like he went to the wedding with Vanessa, whatever her name is, like Nick Lachey's wife. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. Like a two thousands MTV VJ, you know what I mean? Just yeah. like, oh, this is early two thousands feels right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all, all Chris Evans needs is the frosted tips, like Pacey from Dawson's Creek. You sure? We sure he didn't have them? <laughs> he might have. So now, like, obviously we know that there was a history of trying to get these movies made. There was, there's the hidden Fantastic Four movie. Fox kept trying to make Fantastic Four movies to try to keep just the rights from reverting back to Marvel. So they were like, we need to just make movies. So I know there's that super terrible Fantastic Four movie that exists on on VHS tape somewhere that they didn't release um and then we made i was gonna say yeah i was gonna say i remember that we all know the image from that like there's just an image in my head of it yeah and it just looks like so cheap so like made for tv suits Mm -hmm. and like read with the bright white temples and just like uh yeah but that never did release did it it was made but they never came out with it yeah i don't think it it either if it came out it was super rare Mm -hmm. or I don't think it got like a full thing, but it got made so they could keep the rights from reverting over. And that that was somewhere in the 90s. And now 2005, we got it. And we got 2007. We got a sequel like two years later. I mean, like this this first one was enough of a success that it. uh, It definitely warranted a sequel. It looks like the it overall in the box office, it made three hundred and thirty three million dollars on a budget of about a a hundred million. So it okay. made enough of a dent that they greenlit and rushed a sequel, which uh, did just about the same. It cost a little bit more, but it made about three hundred million. But then we never, still, I, well, I guess we did get a two thousand and fifteen one. I was about to say we still haven't gotten another one, but I just got done talking about another one that they did make. <laughs> uh, but it was, that was like a reboot. It wasn't like the same. No, obviously. yes, it definitely wasn't the same. But I was it's just like, this seems like. They're they're known. The Fantastic Four is kind of like known as like the first family of comics. That's what they say. Yeah, and they always seem to struggle with this adaptation, or just something about this just doesn't click. The funny thing about the Fantastic Four to me is 
they do have that nickname that was like a self-appointed nickname i feel like for marvel the first family mm-hmm. and i feel like with the movies and even comic books and all other media marvel wants the fantastic four to be bigger than they are yeah i feel like mar i feel like marvel marvel's main attractions are have always just been spider-man hulk captain america that's like your big three Mm -hmm. then you have iron man with the popularity now recently over the past couple like decades because of the movies and thor kind of fell in there and like fantastic four is this team where like they want you to love them but like yeah it's this team that is our best team but people like no i like the x-men i like the avengers like i don't read fantastic four comics i never really have i've picked up a couple here and there through the years but it's never stuck and like these movies were just kind of like I wasn't dying to go see them because I had to see a Fantastic Four movie. Like to me, I'm sure the Fantastic Four has its fan base out there, but I feel like Marvel has always just wanted them to be more than what they ever can be. Like yeah. people aren't clamoring for the Fantastic Four like they are those other characters. So that's kind of the strange part. I get it. They are they are big in their own right, but they're not as big as I think Marvel wants them to be. You know. No, I 100% agree because I was yeah. that was part of what I was going to say is I really don't like the Fantastic Four. Like <laughs> I like I said I read a couple books and they're fine. Yeah. I'm not opposed to them. Um but they're not my go-to mm-hmm. reading material. They're not my go-to video game. They're not my go-to anything. That nothing's really been successful in a way. And as you say like we're talking about movies coming out. Well, that 2015 Fantastic Four movie that came out the same year as Avengers Age of Ultron and Mm Ant-Man. Civil War came out the next year. Like, we're talking heyday of comic book films where all these movies are making money and Fantastic Four didn't make shit. Yeah. It made $167 million on a budget of one fifty. So, like, there was not a rank, like, a call. Like, people weren't clamoring for Fantastic Four Mm -hmm. even when every movie was comic books were just raking it in. Like you said, we had an, the second Avengers guardians of the galaxy came out the year before, you know, we're coming up on Logan here about two, two years after that. So it's just kind of crazy that fantastic four, just like you said, doesn't really speak to people, even if everyone knows who they are. It's true. I don't know. I, I like the biggest moments I can, I've read of fantastic four, like when they're involved in, just these big events and it's yeah. like read um and and stuff or do like being a big or doom being a big part that's what i was gonna say like being a big part of secret wars the last one a few years ago that jonathan hickman wrote where like doom was the enemy like i liked that because i like doom yeah. like the best thing i like about fantastic four is doom to be honest yeah. <laughs> um i think he's great as a villain and like a kind of a uh thanos level villain that's up there and we'll kind of talk about him a little bit more and his re- representation in these movies but uh yeah i don't know it just doesn't hit the buttons like all the other big superheroes do and it's i don't know i don't know why it's just kind of a thing that they just don't resonate with me as much but i don't know now we can kind of going into the movie a little bit the first thing you really got to kind of look at is the casting yeah. And the team that they put together to uh, be the first family of, of comics here. Um, and I, I and I sent you a text kind of like while I was watching this. I really did think for the time they kind of knocked the casting out the park. Like, I don't know what they could have done different. I'm not saying it's good. Um, <laughs> but yeah. like, I don't know. It all for the 2005, it kind of just like that's who you would cast in those roles. I get it. Um, Yeah, I can kind of see that. And we all know the uh, Chris Evans stuff of him being like redeemed as Captain America later on. But this was his first foray. So like, yeah, he's cool. Jessica Alba was a huge name at the time. Um, She's kind of, you know, one of those girls from the early 2000s who was everywhere and doing stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know who Eon Grafud is (laughs) beyond (laughs) this. Um, like, I don't know what else the man has been in. 
he was an all he played an all right Reed because he looks like Reed. Yeah, but just like it's just funny to me how th- he seems like he disappeared off the face of the earth, and I can't think of anything else I've ever seen him in besides the Fantastic Four movies. I I looked him up. I like Googled him. I DB him. He's just in like a bunch of like British shows or something or like a. Well, he uh, he just pops plays. up in random. Like he was in Horrible Bosses. Uh huh. But his his role is like wet work man. So like when I saw him, I was like, hey, that's that's Mr. Fantastic, you know, like yeah. doing a part. Like I said, he he did do a lot of British, you know, even some video game voices. Um, yeah. but yeah, he he definitely. I'm trying to think. Even before this, was he? He was just pretty much. I mean, he was the fifth officer low in Titanic. Right. So this might have been like I get it. Casting no names works, but it's like. You're a real no name. No offense to Eon Grafud. I don't even know if I'm saying your name right because it's strange to me. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that one was a little weird. And then the other one's Michael Chiklis, which at the time this movie came out, I'm sure he was in his heyday of like The Shield, which everybody watched. Um, do you remember the show The Commish? Of course, <laughs> he was like the Commish yeah. before he before he like worked out and got strong. Yeah, he was just like a little soft bodied. <laughs> police yeah. officer in the commission yeah. yeah um that's all well and good so fine the cast is fine the only thing that kind of throws me off is i know i just said i don't really read fantastic four comics but you know the story behind it yeah. they like reed and ben are old friends like college roommates okay here's the current ages of these actors right now in today <laughs> so you got a minus 20 years for when we were filming back then um Ian Grafud right now is 49. Mm-hmm. Jessica Alba is 42. That's fine. Chris Evans is also 42. So he was supposed to play younger than her, but that's fine too. Yeah. Michael Chiklis is 60. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and you could even just tell watching that, like, these are supposed to be college roommates. The dude looks 20 years older than everybody else playing. So he was like a 40 year old. Yeah. With all these all in their 20s. Yeah. So Reed and Ben are supposed to be college roommates like there's no freaking way I know you guys wanted to cast him as the thing because he's like a bald guy and he's kind of famous right now and he can have a gruff voice like Ben Grimm Susie but (laughs) you're you're so much older than everybody it just looks strange to me and that's all I could think about for a while and they loved showing him not in his thing makeup like they had to show Michael Chiklis for a little while like remember guys he's playing the thing but it's like just the age difference kept throwing me off. Uh, <laughs> they are definitely not looking like college, old like college. They've known each other. Maybe right. uh, Ben just got held back and like didn't he started college later? So while like they're twenty, yes. he's thirty. It's possible. I'm a he, late he, college bloomer. He just looked like everybody's dad, and yeah. it's like he wants he wants to play, be that. like Susie's friend, but he looks like her father. It's like come on. Um, I don't know. I, that just kept throwing me off. Now that you're saying it, it's like psh, you just like broke the the glass there, and I now <laughs> yeah. can't unsee it. But yeah. I didn't put that together or think that through. But um, but Jessica Alba's uh, damsel in distress for two movies was a lot to handle yeah. for being like Sue Storm and like this confident. We're used to now seeing like confident female superheroes. Mm-hmm. And she was not that. She just always seemed like she needed to be saved. Yeah, a lot has a lot has changed in twenty years. We yeah. they, we try not to represent women, especially in superhero movies, that way anymore. You know, it's it's kind of changed for the better, I will say. But just, yeah, just like even I noticed, they did it in the first and second movie. Just a lot of like naked Sue Storm jokes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like. All her clothes are off. Ha ha ha. It's like, that's not funny. And that's just like a 2003 joke. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Before everyone kind of matured. It's just like, it's so funny that all her clothes are off, right? Like, no, it's kind of stupid. And you keep, you guys keep doing it. And it's kind of weird. And I, it's not, I don't get it. Think about what you're saying right now. Uh huh. 2005. Yeah. They did that in the last Thor movie. 
I don't remember the last Thor. Remember movie the scene. Love and Thunder when Chris Hemsworth was taken in front of Zeus, oh, yeah. and then they blew his clothes off, and everyone was like, "And that was the joke." Was that? Oh, we knocked off Chris Hemsworth clothes. Well, yeah. Well, they're still doing that joke. Well, Love and Thunder was stupid, so it that's was. that's mostly God, it was why. So stupid. That's mostly why that joke was still in there. But yeah, I know. I'm just. It's just funny that it's like in 2005, it was lame. Yeah, it hasn't gotten better in 20 years. Yeah, but I get what you're saying about her character just like being like, oh, help, like, and also being obsessed with having her wedding in like the second one. Like, she would have been Sue Storm would have been like, yeah, let's save the world, not like Ugh, my wedding read. You're really yeah. gonna save the world on my wedding day. Are, yeah, we're getting married today. Don't you want to do that? You need to yeah. respect. I am the bride, and you're like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. She didn't understand that. The, the second one is a whole other thing we'll get into here in a second but um and then you of course got to round it out with uh julian mcmahon as victor von doom that's that actor's name i just know him from like nip tuck was i was about to nip say tuck say guy? it just say it man <laughs> was it nip tuck yeah it was nip tuck was this show okay he was on charmed the news original charmed news to me shannon doherty vehicle yeah Right now, he's on FBI Most Wanted. Okay. So he's still doing stuff. Yeah, he's still doing stuff. And then he did a bunch of movies. I think Nip Tuck is what I always... I watched a lot of that at the time. Dr. Christian oh. Troy. Okay. Well, I kind of said what I thought about Doom as a character. What, do you like Dr. Doom, too? Yeah, I, I'm on my... I like the idea of him. I've never really seen him do anything because I don't read those comics. So like I've never read anything of him being that kind of Thanos level. Like I'm aware of it, but I've never actually like experienced it. So, but I like the idea of doom. Like, I mean, he's a cool character. Like I yeah. I like Dr. Doom. I really want them to do more with him. Yeah. I wasn't a huge Dr. Doom guy. Cause yeah, he is primarily the fantastic fours enemy he stepped outside of them for, from time to time like he's gone against you know other characters that you know and he had a yeah x-men he fights sometimes and iron man and whatever and he had a comic book for a while where uh he was the superior i think what was it called the superior iron man but he like had some iron some tony stark armor when he was <laughs> trying to be good too um but like the biggest thing i know him from for me personally, not reading a bunch of Fantastic Four comments is what I mentioned a little earlier when Jonathan Hickman did yeah. um the Secret Wars, like the re his his Secret Wars, like the second one, which was a event a few years ago. And that finally proved to me reading that, like I love Jonathan Hickman's writing anyway. Um, you know, I'm from House of X and and mm -hmm. um stuff like that. But uh that's when I finally viewed Doom as like, oh, he's like a omni level threat and is scary and and is this dude who should be feared across the marvel universe um so yeah i've always since then mostly been a doom guy and mm -hmm. excited to see him used in things in the mcu and whatever as have been the rumors for a few years yeah. which is what kind of made his appearance in this movie disappointing to me yeah um, they just like I don't know. He didn't do much, and they, and they kind of just did weird stuff with him, like gave a metal skin. Like he doesn't have metal skin. He's yeah. he's in a suit. He's not. I don't know. And just but he needed to get powers too. I I mean okay, but I mean I'm just I'm not saying it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I and these older movies especially take liberties from comics and do different things but it, it was just strange i just feel like he was kind of a throwaway uh, even more so in the second one yeah so i don't know i just want a good doom someday hopefully. i know you know i know we've talked about this that's like the biggest thing for if we're going to do a new one and i you know if they're going to shift gears from kang or figure out what they're going to do with that you know it's like i really hope they can do something good with doom and yeah um, like there's just so much with that character that's just being wasted yeah he's like, potential 
He is. He's supposed to be a genius. He's supposed to be all powerful. He's supposed to have powers. He's supposed to rule with Tervia. He's supposed to just be bigger than what they made him. Just like a five second fight on the streets of New York in this one. And just doesn't didn't really have a reason for doing what he was doing, except for I don't like them. I'm gonna kill them. Like there yeah, was he no, didn't have a plan. There was no he, plan. There was there no was no plan. reason for any of it. He was just like, Yeah, I just we need to fight. Right. <laughs> we need to have a fight in the third act, so let's do it. Mm-hmm. So you guys can all come together because you guys are bickering. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. He had he had no reason except just they want you to just believe, oh, he's kind of just like an evil guy. But why? What is he even trying to do? They didn't. It was kind of too shallow for that. To them, Yeah, for I them can't to... tell you. I'm like right. thinking, I'm desperately thinking really hard right now going, what the hell was his plot? He didn't have one. There wasn't one. There was no real plot to this movie. Um, and then we haven't even said whether we even like these movies or not. Um, by by listening to us talk, you can kind of tell they weren't great, but um, they were okay. I was I mean, entertained. I can't say that I hate them. I can't say. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, if they came out today, I don't know. But... Like at the time, I remember going and seeing him in the theater. I remember it was like, oh, cool to see superhero flicks. Like I said, the cast at the time was like, you know, you kind of, I mean, everyone knew Jessica Alba and Michael Chiklis. The, the like I said, Griffold, you had no, no, no idea. Chris <laughs> Evans was making a name for himself and was in a lot of, you know, not another teen movie. And he, he was kind of, you knew who Chris Evans was. Mm-hmm. This was one of his first big breakout roles, but like I said, he was kind of a known, becoming a known yeah, he, he name. He popped in, he popped in and out of stuff here and there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you, you know, you were just kind of like, oh, this is this is a fun cast. I remember having fun, you know, seeing it. Um, yeah, I, I can't say that I'm mad at this movie or I hate it or I don't. You know, it's it's like I like it. It was entertaining. It's a nice little ninety minute superhero romp. Yeah. It is, and it's it's in its own different category. Like we expect more from movies now, superhero movies. I think, and we, if a movie like this came out today, we'd be like, "This is terrible. This is the worst." Our our expectations for superhero movies, I think, have changed. That's why Blue oh. Beetle flopped because this, it's exactly what this reminded me of. Like watching Blue Maybe. Beetle makes you look like you were look, watch. Like I'm watching the trailer for Blue Beetle, and it looks like a early 2000s superhero flick. Sure. I'm like I feel like I've seen this one already. Yeah. So I had no excitement to go see it because I already did twenty years ago. Right. But just like even then for that time, this just being this mid M I D word is a word, and I kind of feel like that's what this was. Because even then there was this level of um I don't know, like goodness from a superhero movie that we were kind of expecting because we'd seen we'd seen x-men which was really good and we had we seen spider-man yet i think so right the first i think one we saw that... i think spider-man 2 was already out yeah so we'd seen those and those movies spider-man were... yeah spider-man 2 came out the year before okay so we'd seen those and, and... x-men 2 okay so we got all those and we got we we'd seen blade which was really good and and stuff so like this one just kind of felt like, uh... Yeah, we had a Fantastic whole Blade Four. trilogy before this movie even came out. Right, and, well, let's not talk about Blade 3, but the first two, anyway, like, set this level of expectation. So, I feel like this movie was like the Ant-Man of I'll... of the times. You know what I mean? Just like... I'll tell you this after... right now. It mm-hmm. was before Iron Man it was the superhero fatigue of the early 2000s and the superhero crash. Because l- listen listen to this list that we have here. This year, we had Elektra and Fantastic mm-hmm. Four. 2006, we had X-Men The Last Stand. Garbage. Mm-hmm. 2007, we had Spider-Man 3. Garbage. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Garbage. And then 2008, <laughs> we got hit with Iron Man. And that's when we started the MCU. And then like that the was revival. when they just started going. Yeah, that was like the revival year. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a crash, yeah. a crash year for Marvel movies. Um, you know, if you're looking at D- DC, they weren't really doing much. But, I mean, we're coming off of Steel with Shaq, Catwoman with uh, Halle Berry. 
mm-hmm. like I said, but we got Batman Begins in 2005, and then Dark Knight, Watchmen, but they're still hit or miss until well, they're, Iron, I mean, DC's always hit or miss. Iron Man and Dark Knight came out in the same year, I think, and that was like, D- yeah. that was like the year of people being like, superhero movies are back. Yeah. This is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this did kind of fall in that time where there was like this downward spiral, which yeah. hopefully we're not falling into again. Um, hopefully not. But yeah, I don't know. Just just watching this first one, especially I just I do, I was on my phone taking some notes, just some things that I found so ridiculous. I'm going to quick fire some of these things because I think they're funny to me. Uh, well, this isn't even like a joke, but Doctor Doom's um, assistant in this was Hamish Linkletter. Yeah. Linkletter. That guy's awesome. Like yeah. he was in what was that show we watched on uh, Netflix? Did you watch it? The uh, Mike Flanagan show. Oh yeah, uh, fucking Midnight Mass. Yeah, he was like the main actor in that, and he was in. So he's in this as do- out. And in my mind, I'm thinking he should have been Doom. Like, why couldn't you make him Doom? Um, you know what else he was in? He was in. A, he's been in a few things. He was on Legion. He was uh, on. He show. was on in Battleship. This is like the twentieth <laughs> time <laughs> you've talked about I Battleship. I know. I, I gotta work it in there whenever I have the opportunity to talk about Battleship. No, but I like that guy. <laughs> no, um, don't talk about it. <laughs> don't talk about Battleship. All right, I already pointed out the Home Alone style music, which is just funny. Watch it again and think about that, and it's just like do do do, like setting traps and going upstairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, We're up to mischief. <laughs> um, I found it hilarious when Ben Grimm first turned into the thing. Like jumped out that thing and had a trench coat all of a sudden, and he went to go. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had the trench coat and the hat, like like Raphael from Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and he was going to find his wife. That's the first thing he wants to do. Who's being played by the actress who was in The Walking Dead? I can't remember her name. Yeah, um, it was uh, Lori Holden. Lori Holden. But he called her on that payphone, and like he was like, "I need you to come outside." And she just came out on the busy New York street in her nightgown. Yeah, I know. She was like <laughs> naked. <laughs> Like what in what world she wouldn't have she'd have been arrested immediately or kidnapped or something. Well and like um, couldn't he have just prepared her in any way? Right. He's like, like Hey honey. babe, I need you to come outside. <laughs> Why would you make her do that? Like, like wouldn't honey, you wanna what? like be like, Hey, something happened? Before you see me, I had a really bad accident. <laughs> <laughs> I might look a little different. You sound different, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was weird. Um, no, what's weird as we're talking about this is when she like divorces him after he just saves a on bus. the street, <laughs> like right. they're on the street and they, the fantastic four first come together and save a bunch of people from falling off this bridge. And then he looks over and his wife's just standing there looking taking sad. Her, and then she just takes off. off her wedding ring and puts it on the street and walks away. I'm just like, that's yeah. a weird way to do that. Yeah. She's a total bitch. Right. <laughs> I don't think she had any lines in the whole movie. She just gave sad looks. Speaking of that scene on the bridge, that was like the big action piece of the movie where they kind of first came together for the first time and saved a bunch of people. Um, Another thing I noticed was like, that just made me laugh was the fire truck coming in for those firefighters to try to help and save people. But shit was blowing up around them and the, the fire truck was about to go off the bridge. And I laughed my ass off when like they showed the Dalmatian and he like covered his face like, Arr! <laughs> like that Dalmatian. <laughs> I was like, that Dalmatian knows bad stuff is gonna happen. I was like, no, the dog didn't want to look. Oh my god, that was cracking up. <laughs> I was like, why'd they do that? Why was that scene included? That didn't that didn't merit the cutting room floor, like a dog covering its eyes because oh no, like some Scooby Doo shit. <laughs> um that was good. Yeah. Um, another big thing I noticed was Victor. Von Doom was kind of ousted from his company the exact same way Norman Osborn was. Did you notice that? Like in a boardroom, them saying, like, you're out, Victor. And then yeah. and then a few scenes later, when he's got his powers, he throws a scientist through a glass. The same way Norman Osborn did. It's like you guys are copying the Green Goblin uh mm-hmm. rise to evil, like in a blatant way, and no one said anything, no one noticed. Like, guys, this is a little too much like uh what they did with Norman, you know, yeah. but yeah, it's weird. That I don't is know weird. If, if you thought about that. I didn't, um, but 
I already said too many naked Sue jokes. And then just the last thing, like, um, towards the end of this movie, which was a big thing throughout the whole thing, is they wanted to kind of be normal again, especially Ben. He because he was the whole movie, his whole story is like it's always his je- story. Yeah, he's jealous and sad, like the other three have powers, but they all look the same, and now he's a freak, he's a monster. So his big thing is um Victor promises him he can he can fix him and save him and he trusts him for some reason and uh then when everyone's in trouble you know the character is like oh what did I do so he gives himself his powers back by like hopping in that machine and then two seconds later he busts through the wall as thing again but like at the beginning of this movie when he got his cosmic powers it took days for them to change yeah so, so this time all of a sudden he's just immediately thing again and has on the nice fantastic four pants like where'd you get those you didn't like those <laughs> um, yeah um but yeah just like a convenient way to make him the thing again immediately when yeah. it shouldn't have been that just weird writing but you know this is superhero movies just generic superhero movies 90 minutes man you just had to move this yeah. move that shit around uh, i yeah. was worse when we shift over to the rise of the silver surfer which mm-hmm. once again, like seeing the Silver Surfer was cool. Um, there were aspects of this movie that were fine, but yes, there was a way too much about their wedding. Sure, way too much. The, I swear, in the opening credits, mm-hmm. they gave us three, three newscasters telling us things that are happening and within the first like 15 minutes of the movie they added two more like that was their plot device to move things along was we're going to show a news anchor explaining what's happening and most of them were just about the stupid wedding (laughs) wedding of the century yeah like newspapers they're like dropping down newspapers and it's got them on the cover like jesus i understand they're celebrities and i'm sure that's would probably happen to to an extent but yeah it was uh rough yeah silver surfer was its own kind of thing um or as i like to call it like sue extra blonde this time like they they really blonded up jessica albert's hair to the point where she looked strange i know you wanted to like make her look more like sue storm or whatever but like her hair in the first one was fine now she just looks like she's wearing a really blonde wig like you know what i mean um yeah, her costumes were really weird. Like she would jump around, and like sometimes, like you're you're in the, for this movie, you're dealing with Galactus mm-hmm. coming to eat the world, or at least like, we're their, talking, version, their version of Galactus. Their version of Galactus to eat the world, right? Like yeah. this is the end of life as we know it. Mm-hmm. And she made so many like just weird costume changes. Was still complaining about her wedding. She was just like you know like hey how's it going reed i also loved in this movie how like he could build like reed could build these giant advanced machines in hours i need three (laughs) hours i need three hours general and i'll be able to build this giant like device sonar detector or whatever the hell it was to try to stop the surfer he's kind of a silver surfer (laughs) that's what we'll call him then um it was yeah that was that was weird that was funny um i don't know i kind of liked this one yeah uh, this was a, fine. A, i liked it a little more than the first one honestly yeah I, mostly because like now they're already a team we don't got to go through the whole origin we can just kind of have a little stupid adventure um i did like the silver surfer i do yeah. like the silver surfer as a character i think he's cool i like his powers i've i've read a couple books with silver surfer in it and i've just always liked him yeah um I couldn't remember if they showed Galactus in this, and I was very disappointed that they did not. They never showed, like, a true Galactus. I I hadn't seen this movie in years, so I was like, that'd be so awesome if they show Galactus coming out of space or whatever. And they never did, which was kind of disappointing. They kind of teased it. Yeah, you saw, like, his silhouette. Yeah, you could see hints of, like, a face and a silhouette and a cloud, but they didn't. Yeah, they kind of chickened out there at the last minute. It was like, we don't have the budget to do Galactus. Um... But yeah, just kind of another chapter that was just a little more tight. I don't know. Yeah. Tighter than the first one, but um, still had its own weird stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like how like Johnny 
and I, I'm almost I'm I watched this movie yesterday and I'm blanking on exactly what happened. But Johnny ended up Oh yeah, the surfer hit him with his powers and, and then Johnny Yeah, Johnny had this ability then to lend like if he touched one of the other Fantastic Four members, he would they would swap powers. But it was so weird that like DNA like that just allows him to swap his powers with people like that I don't know it was just really weird to do it that way of just like the powers knows where it needs to be I think it was kind of a, an unnecessary thing added to this like you didn't need that no I think it was just it was just a way to kind of get laughs and like oh we're gonna have Sue all of a sudden have the human torch powers and she doesn't know what to do and she's kind of and she burns off her clothes it. All right, she's naked again, guys. <laughs> um, and it's another way to get like the the thing makeup off of Michael Chiklis for a scene, so you could have him show himself as a human actor. Yeah. Like, remember, guys, the shield is in this. The commish. I get um, to go bang Carrie Washington now. Right. Right. Blind <laughs> Carrie Washington. Um, yeah. Because they the found blind... like a more gorgeous woman to be the blind yeah. girl for for Ben. Yeah. Yeah, the only way a monster can find love is if it's with a blind woman. Yeah, I know. I mean, they, they do that. They, I think his girlfriend in the comics was blind, too. So it's kind of following comics. Yeah, but I'm sure. Come on. I'm um, sure it's fine. But yes, it's just funny. The power swap thing for Human Torch just felt unnecessary. I don't know if they did it just for that scene at the end where he's fighting Doom on the surfboard so he could have all the powers. Like maybe, I mean, that was cool. I'm not going to say that yeah. that wasn't cool. Maybe but Chris it made Evans. me laugh because I kept thinking about Secret Invasion. We just got done watching. Oh, right. He was like the first Gaia. Yeah, like Gaia, <laughs> and she's like walking around with her Drax arm. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> this is that. This is that. This is where they got the inspiration. They were like, they were sitting in the writer's room for Secret Invasion, and they're like, hey, you remember in Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, when Johnny gets all four of their powers? What if we do that? Yeah, for the whole show, <laughs> it's just uh, ridiculous. I also was trying to figure out what the hell Doom was doing in this movie. Yeah. Like he wanted the surfboard mm -hmm. because that was where the power was there. So he wanted to have this power, but did he not realize that the planet was about to die? So what was he going to do with that power? I don't know. I don't think he knew about Galactus or whatever. He just wanted the power. My biggest thing with Doom in this is. Why did he? Why was he ever trusted by the government? And why was the Fantastic Four just like cool with it? I know. Like, no, this guy just tried to kill us last year, and he still has his power, so he's going to be able to vaporize you at any minute. <laughs> like, why them trusting them? The government trusting him just because it's like he has information on the surfer. Here's this video, but that was he it. He didn't provide any reason to be trusted. He, you guys, just like have video of him trying to kill everybody in new york last year what that that part bothered me and I, it didn't make any sense and then when he turned on everyone i was like you idiots are surprised like they left him alone like building things quietly like he literally came showed him a video and said the silver his powers are from the board and they were like okay good we'll take you to jail now like he contributed <laughs> right. he didn't help him build anything no, he was just, just like kinda, off building stuff yeah. on his own yeah, he was just kind of over Reed's shoulder the whole time. Like, why are you letting this guy walk around loose? Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, that, his that, evidence that, was weak. Like, everything about him was weak in this movie, which sucks. I mean, it was cool to see him flying around on the surfboard. And like I said, I did enjoy the Johnny using all four powers, even though that was ch cheesy. It was cool when he was beating up Doom that way. I mean, but then I kept thinking, like, what are you doing like it just was really yeah. weird of what is he doing and you just you have this bigger threat of galactus so doom just set seemed so just minuscule mm. like just seemed like I said a waste yeah i mean they wanted to put him in the movie again because he is dr doom yeah but kind of just another throwaway which is all the more reason why i want like a doom to be have some retribution at some point and be something more in these movies than what he's been so far like i didn't see the one you did in part the 2015 version i don't know what they did with doom in that one really don't think probably too much but um i don't know sucks doom doom has the coolest scene in that movie okay like i i mean he's he was a whole other thing as well 
Um, they took their liberties with what he was. And I mean, that whole movie is different. Like the plot, the way that they get their powers, the timeline, like everything about it is um, they took liberties with, which is a big problem with it. But mm -hmm. um, yes, I think as we're talking about moving into whenever we get a new Fantastic Four movie, which is rumored for... Well, the, the dates moved multiple times, so... Yeah, pre-production. Pre-production is expected May 2nd, 2025. So we might have this in, like, 2026 or 7. Something like that. It, and and depending on where we're looking at later, um, we've only had rumors of castings. Um, well, yeah, have any of those casting rumors done anything for you? No. I can't even really remember them. I know the last couple, I didn't know who any of them were. Um, wouldn't they? Didn't they just do one with, with Jack Kirby being Reed Richards? Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby's a Jack old, Quaid. I was gonna say Jack Kirby's a old comics creator. Right? Is he popping back out of the grave? Um, <laughs> <laughs> popping out the grave. You know what? Fine, I'll do this since you guys can't get it right. I did see something with Jack Quaid. And then it was like, well, he's not going to be one of them, but he would be in the movie. Um, the last one I saw was like Matt Smith as Reed Richards. And then the actor who played uh, Eddie Munson in Stranger Things could be Reed and someone else as uh, Sue. No, he'd be I, Johnny? I, that's what I meant. Okay. Eddie Munson being Johnny. And then that's, te that's terrible. Eddie. Yeah. Eddie Munson. Uh some actress I didn't recognize who some people I guess didn't know as as Sue and and then before that everyone was saying the big one before that until it got debunked which maybe it hasn't been debunked is Adam Driver and um, Margot Robbie as Sue and Reed and um, and then we're even going back to like years ago when everyone couldn't stop talking about John Krasinski and mm -hmm. uh, and his wife what's her name um, Emily Blunt Emily Blunt like which that them being married in real life would be cool because, you know, they already have the built in relationship, but we know now that's probably not going to happen, especially because John Krasinski portrayed um, Reed in the Doctor Strange multiverse kind of just as like a fan service, which was fine for people, but it was like disappointing. I was like, we've talked about that movie and how dumb it got there at the end. And like that whole thing with the Illuminati was a disappointment to me. Like you introduced all these characters, especially like Reed and and you got Haley Atwell coming as finally like live action Captain Carter, which everyone loved, just for like five minutes later to kill them all. And like I guess it was edgy and cool, but it was also like that's dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even Haley Atwell has come out and said of her disappointment that she finally got to play that character just to be in like a, just in like a scene to be cut in half by a shield. You know? Um so there's been tons of casting rumors. The last one I heard is like, or read before the strike started, they were talking to Josh Hartnett about Dr. Doom. So who knows what the hell is going to be like, I'm kind of, it's just fatigue. We've talked about fatigues, but there's been fantastic forecasting fatigue for years now. And I don't really want to participate in it anymore until they finally just tell me the damn cast. Like if you're going to do it, if you're not, I know you're not going to now because everyone's on strike, but hmm. at some point you just got to tell us who these damn actors are going to be. I, I would hope. Yeah. I don't really know what they're been waiting for. It feels like unless they just don't know, they just, I don't know if they're waiting for a specific event and now, you know, but like they pulled out of Comic-Con. So we were all at this Comic-Con stuff, but then I guess the, they pulled out because of the writer strike. Maybe right. the writer strike screwing stuff up, but I mean, we should have, they've been talking about this, fantastic four movie for years you know we could have gotten the cast but if they don't know it they don't know it so yeah Maybe, hopefully that's the case they don't know just quit teasing that that or i don't know if it's even them doing it maybe it's just people making up stuff and like we'll quit saying like it's rumored it's confirmed and then it's not and then it changes and it's whatever it's like i'm tired of it yeah um but beyond the cast like what do you hope for for a fantastic four movie if they do I mean they are going to make another one so like what do you want to be different about it or the same or can they borrow some things that worked for you um how do you kind of see them fitting in the MCU I know there's rumors of they might be displaced out of time um 
like they're from the 70s but they get brought to modern day or whatever and they might be younger than we've kind of seen them before so i don't know what are you kind of hoping for for fantastic four in the future i'm hoping for more with doom i want if doom's going to be in it i want him to be a threat and i want it to be just valid but i also don't want it to be i don't know end of the world like all of these things are like saving the world i kind of like to see like these movies just kind of like a small scale adventure Mm -hmm. with these things and not be like the world's about to explode um and build doom up to lead to that type of threat kind of like they did with loki like loki was in thor and I had no idea Loki was going to be the bad guy for Avengers and bring them all together, but he built up to that. Right. And it was it was a viable threat. Like, I I bought that. I, that makes sense. So it did something similar like that, where you kind of have him just kind of get his feet wet, but then jump in. I really hope that they don't necessarily do an origin again. Like you said, whether it's a time jump or something, but just, I don't know. I feel like that's a, just a story that everybody knows. Like, I just don't need to see an origin again mm-hmm. for it. It's now been done in movies twice, two different origins, but you've still done it twice. So, I mean, it's like, hopefully they can like homecoming it and let sure. them just exist already. Um, I don't want to watch a whole bunch of Ben Grimm just being sad about being the thing. I understand that's his character arc, but once again, it's like, we've seen it. Yeah. They've now done, like you said, three Fantastic Four movies, and that's been Ben Grimm's just arc. Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I don't kind of like I liked in Rise of the Silver Surfer where Ben was cool with it. Yeah, he accepted it. In that he film. accepted it, and he just was there. And I liked that he just didn't have to worry about that. So the idea of them going through another movie of him changing and needing to like deal with that again just feels like a waste. Um, how about you? Yeah similar things um agree wholeheartedly on the doom thing um i want to see dr doom done right but also i kind of don't expect him to really even maybe be in this first one or if he is just maybe it'll be at the end maybe victor's in it but he won't be doom until the end because i do feel like they do want to use dr doom as this omni level thanos level threat at some point so I think you don't want him just to be like the villain of Fantastic Four one and then he's vanquished and then whatever. I think you want to build him to this level of like this guy who can take on everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might even be pivoting to that because of all the stuff going on with Kang and you might want to pivot away from Kang. So um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to see that out of Doom. I'd like to see him presented in that way. And just, I don't know, just more of not such a yuck yuck you know funny (laughs) like throwaway movie i want i kind of want to see them taken seriously as characters and believe that they are in the mix with everybody else and um can kind of be important to what's going on in the mcu and i marvel wants them to be a focal point of the comics so make them a focal point of the movies you know what i mean make it make it just feel like it matters and not just uh you know quantumania or something you know i don't i don't want that I want something that feels good. And just like you have all this time to get the casting right. Just get the casting right. I don't care if it's no name people. Just get the casting right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to be excited because we've just been being teased for so many years. But at some point, they're going to have to come out with something, right? So I just want it to be good. That's all. I know it's like one of the big ones they want to end like a phase on. They want to make it big. That's kind of how they previewed it when they first showed the four and it's like at the at the end of one of the phases they wanted to end of they they wanted it to end phase five or phase six or something so yeah they just, moved it around and made some plans and yeah so i don't know just make it cool entertain me yep i can't <laughs> really ask for more than that so yeah i definitely agree with that and i'm sure i'll be here for it but this was our our rewind, checking out uh, Fantastic Four. It'll be another twenty years before we watch these movies again. Yeah, probably we'll be sixty year olds talking about. Uh... <laughs> Will we? I don't know. God willing. God, God willing, we'll be sitting here twenty years, going. You remember Fantastic Four? Can you believe that movie's forty years old? 
we're talking through our brains and not moving our mouths. That's how technology <laughs> is now. <laughs> we'll live forever. Yeah. Live forever. So, yes, this has been Race to Geek Rewind, talking through our brains. How to you? Uh... <laughs> It'll exist uh, someday. I'm sure. I'm sure. But you have any final thoughts? Any final comments you want to make about Fantastic Four or just no, nah, man? Just uh, which uh, last question? What's your preferred catchphrase? It's clobbering time or flame on? And how come Reed and uh, Sue don't have anything like invisible time? Stretchy man <laughs> is here. <laughs> stretch, stretch and away. Um, also, didn't his didn't the stretching always look dumb? <laughs> like i mean it's, also, it's just it's, it's also the, it's the dumb. cgi of the time but stretching i think that's why in the miss marvel show they kind of went away from that because they're like ah we still can't get stretchy abilities right and maybe they were smart to do that because they looked not great i get it it's 2005 cgi but we're still working on that stretching ability it's um, a weird ability just to begin with like there's only yeah. so much you can do with it yeah like it's not the most flashy of things um i would probably go with clobber in time it's more iconic it's more iconic and it, it kind of like works flame yeah. on it always just made me laugh because i'm just like wait does his powers actually need him to say that <laughs> does he does he have to say it does he have it? to say that it's kind of like yeah. spider-man does he have to make that exact gesture i right. mean it made sense it was weird when he needed to do it in the Tobey Maguire when the webs were coming out of his body. But, yeah. like, it's just kind of one of those things where I'm like, does he have to say flame on every time? Right. Or is he choosing to do that? Like, is that his trigger word that has to be said for it to work? But why would it have to be said? I don't think it was, but just, like, they made sure he said it every time. Because it's just like, it's how I get pumped up. It's how I get hyped. Yeah. Yeah, because it seemed like he said it because he didn't know how to turn it on yeah so he said it and then he just kept doing it and i was like mm. that's how he that's how he got his mind right i guess I all guess. right I guess. all right but clobbering time it is clobbering time so it's clobbering time we're gonna clobber out of here <laughs> <laughs> clobber our way on out of here yeah and we're gonna do something else so i think that's gonna do it for us this week so for raise the geek i'm chris and i'm don and thanks for checking out the show where geek is all we speak